so I had this amplifier um, running before and it was okay, but I, I wanted to see if maybe I could upgrade it. Um, and what do I mean by upgrading it? So first of all, let's, uh, let's zoom down on, oops, let's zoom down on this thing and get a, get a screwdriver. So this has a little, uh, a little can on it that just pops on, which is nice. Uh, that's for us upgrading folks. So, um, sorry, just got a text message from my friend. All right, so with that, uh, so what does this have inside of it? Maybe we should draw a diagram. All right, so there's an in and there's an out. And then there's a thing that looks sort of like this. It's got a power tab on it. That's the amplifier. This is ground and this is in and this is out. And the tab is ground. And then this comes over and this comes over. There's a capacitor here and a capacitor here. Okay. So capacitively coupled in, capacitively coupled out. And then uh, these are, these are coaxes. These are SMAs. And right here is Uh, something that looks something like this. Actually, there's two capacitors here in this thing. But anyway, the plus 12 comes in, goes through a resistor, looks like 91 ohms, um, goes through some filtering. It looks like there might be a little inductor here. And then the way these, um, uh, Amplifiers get their powers, they inject it in the output, so the, the power goes in the output, and then it's capacitively coupled out, lets the AC out. So there's a DC path and there's an AC path, okay? Uh, this is also known as a T network, or a, I forget the T something or others. Anyway, so that's what's in there. And this little guy here was probably some cheapo Chinese thing. And I found some guy on eBay who had official mini circuits. Now these little guys, the Galley 21s. Let's take a look at the data sheet for the Galley 21s. Uh, DC to eight gigahertz. Check this out. Uh, it's a uh, NGAN, in Indian gallium phosphide HBT. HBT, I'm not sure what that stands for. Um, by, I don't know, anyway. Uh, frequency range, yeah, uh, 50 ohms plus uh, uh, 12 dB, oh, dBm. So output power is a 12 dBm. Uh, probably that's the 1 dB compression point. Excellent heat. Uh, you can wash it. Um, used for cellular phones and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is simplified, right? It's just some transistors, and that's why you put a... Uh, power in the, in the, in, 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 into the thing from this side, you bring power in and then you, uh, AC couple it out. And what other things does the data sheet tell us? Ooh, oh man, can't find the page. Uh, frequencies, uh, DB gain, about 13, 12, 13 DB gain, about nine DB gain at eight gigahertz, but 14 gig DB at lower things. Uh, this thing will go down to, where will this thing go down? What did I say? Oh, it says DC to eight, DC, DC reference to. That'll be really good. I was looking for something that was DC, so. But it has eight, I have uh, AC um, blocking capacitors. So how do they say DC? Must have to have really, really big capacitors. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's swap it out. I say we swap it out just for fun. I mean, these were super cheap. I forget what these were. Uh, let's see if we can get one out. I bought two because they were super, super cheap. Then I probably might destroy one because they're super, super tiny. Um, can we open this up? Get one out. There is one. Right there. Don't sneeze. Uh, so he looks official. And uh, we'll have to figure out how to desolder this thing and... I guess hot air station might be the best way to do it and uh, pull it out of there. Yeah, so let's do that. 
All right, my hot air, my hot air gun is warming up. And we shall see if we can remove this thing. it out of the way, it's probably easier. There we go. And push it out of the way, perfect. Ouch, my tweezers got hot. All right, that one's out. And I think this will be easy put back in. And I don't think I want to reflow. I don't know. I don't think I want to reflow it. I think I want to stick it in by hand. I think I have more control with a with a sock iron. So I think I think I will do that. Yeah, I think I'll put it in with sock iron. I feel more comfortable that way. Whatever you feel comfortable with. You do you. All right, let me uh, change tips on my soldering iron so it's nice and fine tip. Now, get that heating up. All right, let's see. It's got a little bit of uh, my flux. Oh. Flux is not in within reach. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of flux to the board here. It's already warm. Thing. All right. And what I'm going to do tin my iron. All right. Bring this over about where I want it. There we go. I got one of the three legs. Now it's very, very solid. You can see a little bit better. I will slaughter the tab. And slaughter the other, the other two legs. There we go. And then I always test it with a uh, continuity checker, make sure that the soldering was okay. So we will do that. So let's make sure this is ground. Okay, so I'm making contact to the top of the pin. So the solder should be underneath it. If I measure the top of the pin, that means that there was Good contact at the bottom, so we have ground, that's good. And to the top of this tab, yep. And to here, top of the pad. And to here, top of the pad. All right, so it's in there. So, we put its little, little cover back on. There we go, should work. So let's take it over to the uh, network analyzer and check it out. Okay, the first measurement is transmission, and we can see we're getting about a 12 dB gain. And it's nice and flat from 300 kilohertz to 1.3 gigahertz. So it's working fine up there. Let's zoom in down here at the bottom. Let's do a 
Let's see, stop of say 100 megahertz. And we'll turn our marker on. And so we're operating down to, oh, two, two megahertz. So it's starting to roll off a little bit. It's, it's flat to about 15 megahertz. So seven megahertz, yeah, so 40 meters and up. <laughs> it's definitely good. So, I mean, it's, it's usable down here, no, no problem at all. So yeah, DC to, uh, DC, the roll off's due to the capacitively coupling. So that looks, that looks just great. Uh, let's see, let's look at the Smith chart return loss. Um, I haven't calibrated for that yet, but we'll take the default calibration and see how it looks. Uh, measure two, we'll do reflection, and we'll do Smith, and uh, okay, we'll do the stop frequency of 1.3 gigahertz. And yeah, that's right there, 50 ohms, so that looks pretty good too. Let's do a measurement one off. We'll display big. And uh, let's go ahead and calibrate. So we'll get a good measurement here. Uh, I'll take this off. And we will do a cal one port. Open. Short. Load. I don't have the Smith set to 50 ohms. There we go. Yeah, we're looking good. Let's do format, visitor. Yeah, look at that. It's really, really flat. 1.2 to 1. And log mag, we're down below minus 20. So yeah, OK. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So I really, really like the upgrade. So this was definitely worth it. I don't remember how much just spent, just a couple bucks. Um, and now I have an amplifier that I'm just very, very happy with. And supposedly it goes up to eight gigahertz, so I can't test it on this machine. And the PC board layout might, might fail. It's still a cheap Chinese layout, so. But I'm perfectly happy here at 1.3 gigahertz. And uh, yeah, everything looks, uh, everything looks great, so. Very, very well done upgrade. I like it.